Hey, welcome back Chocolingo Vibes family. Thanks for being on my channel. And uh, my uncle, who happened to be the former mayor of Arima, his name is Ashton Ford, he will be introduced shortly, took me on a trip or get to know about the uh, first people of Arima. And I had no clue this still existed to this day, but there's actually an entire indigenous population still alive today still living amongst Trinidadians on the island. And that part of history is still there, available for us to access. I met up with my uncle and he decided to take me on a journey. Arima has always been regarded as the home of the Amerindians. Although it is difficult to find a pure blood Amerindian within the district of Arima or anywhere else in Trinidad, there's still evidence of their existence and the lingering impact of their cultural influence. Like many other regions in Trinidad, Arima, which emerged from the banks of what is known today as the Arima River, in fact received its name from an Amerindian word which means water. Though this has not been confirmed, other belief is that it was named after a great warrior of that time. So sit back, relax, and let's enjoy what we have to discover and learn, and please if you're in Trinidad and you have some time to visit, please come out and support the indigenous cultures. A lot of our Trinidadian heritage comes from these cultures. So give whatever you can and always bring awareness if you can. Again, thank you for watching. Let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Thank you. What man? So this is the museum. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see this. Bury some of the ancestors from here when the red house is located. Oh wow. And when they, they didn't know where the red house they discovered bones and things. Wow. It was real sad. Yeah. So that was when the uh, the Spanish and the British were here yes, that time? Spanish and the British fight for here all the time. So these are all the little souvenirs and stuff that they make. Yes. They make it. I went to school with that lady. In. This she lady, yeah? Queen. She died there. She was the only best queen here. to show up when there was a school uh, school coming for a tour so. morning 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 good morning so cute. Good morning. Thank you very much. Teachers, pupils, welcome to Arima. Arima is a historical town. In 1888, it was granted a royal status borough by Queen Victoria. So this is what makes us 
is historical and uh, we are the only royal chartered borough in the Western Hemisphere. So that makes us more important. In addition, you are at the home of the first people, which also makes us more important as a historical town. And it's good that you are here to get some information about the first people. We celebrate, we have celebrations of the borough on the 1st of August, and then uh, at the end of the month, we have the celebration of the Santa Rosa First People. There are a lot of activities involved in the Santa Rosa Festival, which your lecturer here will talk to you about. I hope you all have an enjoyable visit, because you all come from very far, plus Santa Rosa is far. So for those of us who grew up in Arima, we grew up with the Santa Rosa First People community, and we all participate in the activities. So it is good that you come from San Fernando to learn about Arima and to learn about the first Santa Rosa first people. Thank you very much, and I hand you over. Okay, thank you, Mr. Paul. So today, we're going to start and we're going to ask you a question. What do you all think were the foods of the first people, or what do you say you eat long ago? Yeah? A good tea, very good. Cassava, very good. Fish. Fish, right? Meals, yes. right? Yes. So you have all that, right? So at that time, they didn't have the nice luxury of going to the supermarket and purchasing their food or even to the fast food outlets. They had to actually hunt. They used to fish and they used to farm. So they used to catch a lot of their wild animals. And they used to do a lot of agriculture where they plant one of the main crops known as cassava. Right? So you all know about cassava? Yeah, yeah. Right. So they used to make a lot of nice things. You all know a lot about cassava bread before? No. no? Alright, so I'll show you what a cassava bread looks like. We have cassava bread, we have drinks as well, they used to do a lot of corn. So today I'm going to show you some of the utensils they use to made this food. I'm going to show you some of the tools that they used to hunt. I'm going to show you some instruments. And after harvesting the cassava, they made this. They will look at it based on the actual tree trunk and spoon. This here is spoon. So they use this to grate the cassava. So they will go on to strain the cassava. Strain all the better juice out of the cassava. They use this what we call a pulley, right? So what they did, they packed the cassava inside here, inside like this, you see you open it to the front, all right? And you hang it to the ceiling like this, all right? You open it to the, to the ceiling, and then you take a piece of wood, and you place it here with two weight, and it will contract like this, and squeeze the juice out of the cassava. They serve it for any particles from the grater, or the grated cassava, it comes out from the grate, the, the sifter. So they sift it and they get the furring, what they call the cassava, the grated cassava, and they go on to bake it. Now at that time, the first people, they, they didn't have a refrigerator or microwave that we have today. So they have to preserve their food. And the cassava bread that they have will go for six months. What? So if they bake the cassava bread today, they can consume it for six months without it going bad. You understand? So if we cook it today, six months later, we can still eat it. Right? So I'll show you, it's, the cassava bread is baking right now, so I'm waiting for one. I'll show you it after. And you'll see what the cassava bread usually looks like. Right? So this, these are just some of the foods that they use. So that's also you all have your book bag today. You put your books and stuff. This here is what they used to carry their load at that time. So if they have this cassava or they hunt a wild animal, they'll place it in this marriage and it goes to the back of the hunter. This is how your book bag goes to the back. Right. 
a little bit twice and then that back and then place in the front, blow, it comes out. It's done the animal. Oh wow. Good day, good day. I can record the cooking process. Eh? All right. <laughs> so this is what? What is this here? This is the actual bread. Finish. Okay. And this is the chulha. Or, or what's the name all you use for this? This cooking area. The bakery area. Yeah. Try it out, man. Mm. Well, that concludes our tour. I'll update you guys on the after experience. It was really a wonderful experience. Thank you, Uncle Ashton, for setting this up. Yes, I got some of that already. Orima has always been regarded as the home of the Amerindian. Although it is difficult to find a pure blood Amerindian within the district of Orima or anywhere else in Trinidad, there is still evidence of their existence and the lingering impact of their cultural influence. Situated in north-central Trinidad, Arima has been for more than a century the most easterly settlement in the interior of Trinidad. As we continue our Guardian Media Community project, we focus on the borough of Arima. We search to find what is the meaning of this eastern town. The best place to start was the Arima Santa Rosa First People's Village nestled in the heart of the town. The community wealth is in their knowledge. Speaking to Carib Chief Ricardo Hernandez Barth, he says there are many versions on the origin of the name. We don't have a clear-cut factual description mm -hmm. of really if Arima got its name from High Arima or High Arima took its name from Arima. There are many suggestions. There are some who say Arima means water. We do not believe that it means it does not translate literally from Arima to water in any of the indigenous languages that we that we know. It is still unclear, however, Ricardo spoke